Tēnā koe te kaikarango o te rae Tēnā koe, tēnā koe Karanga mai, karanga mai, karanga mai Ngā hapu o Latmote Thank you very much for your warm welcome for David and me today. It's, it's wonderful to be here where indeed it's a privilege to be in this beautiful place and to acknowledge the mana of this historic settlement. I reflect on how much it must have changed in the years since the role I occupy was created by Queen Victoria back in 1840. And I reflect on how successive Governors General have seen it as their responsibility to honour and maintain those historic links and the historic partnership that was created between the Crown and Iwi with the signing of Te Tiriti o Waitangi. So it's only right that I should begin my three-day visit to Canterbury with coming to one of the earliest places uh, of settlement in this area. I'm delighted that we have this opportunity to visit Te Waihora, your own wahitapu, as well as a place of international ecological significance for the diversity and abundance of its wildlife. We're eager to learn of the work of Te Waihora Co-Governance Group for the restoration and protection of the lake and the Taumutu wetlands. Your goals fit perfectly with my own strategic priorities because during my term in office I want to highlight areas where New Zealanders are contributing to the public good. Our well-being and the well-being of the planet are dependent on us all thinking carefully about how we use the Earth's resources, how we deal with waste and how we preserve our environment. As we all know, to our cost, human beings have been remarkably efficient at destroying ecosystems and driving other species to extinction. It's a tragic legacy of human occupation of the planet and as you've recognised, we must do whatever it takes to heal the ecosystem ki uta ki tai. We now have a better understanding of ecological balance where every plant, animal and bird plays its part. We're also better at measuring things. Data does help us understand where changes need to be made. And we're innovative, so we can look for ways to mitigate harm and, we have, uh, and what, work out what we must do to reduce harm in the future. But the most important thing to change is our mindset at every level of society, so we share a common goal of restoring balance and maintaining it for generations to come. Clearly, kaitiākitanga of our precious landscape and waterways is a collective responsibility. So I'm looking forward to finding out how your partnership at, in Te Waihora catchment, drawing on both mātauranga Māori and scientific methods, is making a positive difference. I wish you all your, the very best with your work to restore the Māori of Te Waihora and return it to its previous state as a significant mahinga kai. As you take on this challenge, know that future generations will see the work that you're doing at this time as a significant turning point in the history of the region and will be forever grateful for your efforts. Kia ora, kia kaha, kia manuanui, katoa. <coughs>
Te Waihora and talked about the abundance of the the water, um, the the fish and the the um, the wildlife as well. And so the first name given to um, Te Waihora was Te Kiti Ika or Rakai Hotu, the fish basket of Rakai Hotu. Um, and um, it, in our lake, we have over 45 different types of fish, and we have round about 165 different types of birds that use the lake in any one year. So you mm -hmm. can see why it was called a fish basket and Banks Peninsula being called uh, Pataka or Rakai Hotu as well. So it was of huge significance for us for Mahinga Kai. Um, following um, Waitaha, we had uh, Katima Moi and the chief uh, Tutikawa, who established a par site at Waikakahi um, at the eastern end of Kaitereti Spit, he too was attracted here because of the wealth of um, food within uh, the area. And then more recently we had, um, as Naitahu trekked further south from the North Island and acknowledging our whānau in the North Island where we journeyed, um, we, um, uh, Te Rua Heki Heki, whilst um, they were in Kaikoura where a number of, uh, of our whānau resided for a while, heard about the abundance of uh, the food down here. And so when they were journeying down here, he claimed um, uh, Waihora as um, his place and so um, he saw the absolute um, benefit of being um, domiciled here within this local area and so we have this, um, this journeying and this coming here where they have been attracted by the abundance of kai within um, Te Waihora. Unfortunately, whilst that was the case, um, as you acknowledged around about 1840 and onwards, um, our Mahinga Kai that was promised to us um, has been uh, our, our um, availability, our access to it um, has been legislated against. And so um, Te Waihora now currently covers around about 20,000 hectares, give or take the water level. It was significantly bigger at the time of the signing of the treaty. And so was um, very much, we have places like Motukarara, which um, was an island, and it tells you it was an island. It's now no longer an island because the water, um, at the lake area has shrunk significantly. So we actually lost our ability, our Mahinga Kai, which is what makes us who we are. And that has, um, that has been decreased for successive generations. And so um, for us at Taumutu, for us at Naitahu, um, and for um, our partners here as well, it's around restoring Te Waihora to what it once was. We have some of um, uh, our toa who are no longer with us who talk about being able to see the clear water of Te Waihora. Um, and um, so we have a vision of restoring it back to being that wonderful place that it once was. And so in 2005, we had the, um, a partnership with DOC um, where we established a joint management plan. And more recently, we've established co-governance. And so I want to acknowledge um, Environment Canterbury, um, the Selwyn District Council. We have Christchurch City Council and others who make up, and we have some zone members um, who are part of um, all of us who are coming together to actually restore mm. our vision for Te Waihora. So we want to see it return to what it once was. We have, we have grand plans of restoring the wetlands, which were the lungs of the water, which helped um, keep uh, things alive. Um, and so these are part of our vision that we're working towards. We acknowledge it's not going to happen quickly. We acknowledge that it's going to be generations probably before we start to see a significant difference. But that is what we all here today aspire to, is restoring Te Waihora to its former glory. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora.